You're getting new air bars. You're getting new air bars. And you too are getting new air bars. But wait, we don't have any. Guess we're gonna have to make them ourselves. So for materials, all we're really gonna need is our rod, which is 3 8 inch uh, colder old steel. I bought those in 12 foot sections for $8 for the entire 12 feet. And then we also need our bolts, which are and going to be welded and end up being our studs. Those are 5 16 by one inch long. And I chose to get grade eights. First thing we're gonna do is take our half inch socket and just pop these nuts off. Hopefully they're not on there too long and they actually come off. Otherwise, sometimes they break. Pro tip. Don't wait until your uh, wear bar is so thin that they just snap the bolts instead of actually turning. Uh, you can see I only got the one off, but the other two are still on there, and I'm basically going to have to torch those off now. You should be replacing the wear bars when the bar itself is like half worn, and this one, well this is the worst part of it, but... Next thing we're gonna do is get our jack under there and lift her up. Alrighty, now that it's off the ground, I like to take my pry bar and just pop it under here. This one only has two studs, so it's pretty easy. And just gently work it down. Well, this one was pretty easy. It just popped right out. But uh, you can see it's actually bent. So that's not good. Um, well, we might have to take the other one off because we're going to be using this one as a pattern for our the new wear bar. All right, so I did manage to get a wear bar that was usable for a pattern off of my liquefier. Luckily, it's the same design, but uh, this one's got three studs instead of two. So it's the same spacing. We just won't put a third stud in for the 400. Um, but next thing we're gonna wanna do is cut our stock. And so to get a length, we're just going to take and put a tape measure on the end and run it down. And mine is coming out to 36 and a quarter inch. So your mileage is going to vary based on whatever model you're doing. But I already happen to have mine cut to length, so we're going to get to work with this. Now the first bend we're going to make is this back one here. So I'm going to take my tape measure and just kind of guesstimate here um, it looks to be like my bend is about at an inch and three quarters so I'm gonna clamp my new stock in the vise at an inch and three quarters and we're gonna make a bend all right now we grab our big hammer uh, this one's a three pound one and just give it a couple whacks you don't want to go too much at a time because it's a lot harder to bend it back correctly than it is to just bend it a little more. But I'm going to take now and set my old wear bar, which we have for a pattern over here, to see if we have enough bend. Oh, still got to go a little more. That should be good. So if you can see, this back one we want to have pretty close. And we're just going to take and kind of line them up again. And we can see that the bend in mine kind of starts right about here. So next thing I'm going to do is, still having that mark, take and put that in my vise. And I want to make sure that this back part here is level. When I put this in the vise, I want to make sure that it's level across so that way this bend ends up being straight with our bend in the front. We're going to take our hammer again and we're just going to bend it ever so slightly. These ones are real gentle bends. And I'll move it about an inch and bend it again. And it's the same process. You're just going to take and lay this over the top until you recreate this bend as close as you can. But we're done with this one. And now we have to go test fit it in our ski to find out where we put the studs. So back over at the sled, we've got our rod. We're going to take and just dry fit it. 
take and bend it up. There we go. Okay. Now you might notice that it's not fully snug up against the ski and that's okay. We're gonna have the bolts in there to actually snug it up. Next thing we're gonna do is to get it snug up there, we can take and let our sled down. And that should pull it right up onto the ski. So now this should be in its operating position. We're just gonna take a Sharpie and only in one hole, we're gonna take right in the center of the hole and mark our wear bar and that's going to be the mark we're going to use to line up our bolts now we can jack it back up and take it back out okay so now that it's time to put our studs in i found that the best way to do it is to make a jig so what i did was i've got this two by four and i take my old rod and i'm just going to set it on here like so and I'm just doing it at an angle so I can fit more patterns on this piece of wood. And then hammering them in like that makes a little impression on the wood. And then we're going to go over to the drill press and just drill these out using a 5 16th drill bit. Then our bolt will just sit right in there and our spacing will be all good. Okay, so I've got this all set up and I have done a few already. But uh, here's the mark on our rear rod. That's going to go right in the center of this bolt right here. And then we just need to make sure that this is centered on here and that this one is in the center of the rod. Now we'll take and clamp it down. However you can clamp it down, that's going to be good. Basically, you just have to make sure that your rear rod and your bends are perfectly straight up and down. And then we'll take and tack them up. One last thing that I'm going to do is I've got these hard surfacing welding rods. Um, we just got these at our local frack fair. I don't know exactly what brand they are. But uh, I'm just going to take and run a couple beads down the length of this. And this is going to act as like carbides. So I should get a longer life out of them. We put these on plow points and it seems to really help with the life of those. And one thing with that is you don't want to go the entire length of it and fill it up. I left spaces so that way there's still uh, flexible areas in it so we can actually bend and get it into our ski. All right, now all we've got left to do is install it. I like to put washers on mine and I will have to take and uh, work from the back to the front just to get it to uh, draw up and actually push in on the pattern. So I'm going to tighten this one up and it should pop this one right into place. There we go. Now I can take and set it back down and finish tightening it up. And that's all there is to it.